Um, all protocol has been observed. Good morning, everyone. Before I start, I would just like to put out my hypothesis. I think that this is my hypothesis before I start. I think by the end of this talk, no one will be sleeping. Who's with me? <laughs> so I believe that curiosity is what really spurs innovation. And after walking a little bit around, I saw one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Um, and because I've seen the eagerness and the, the vigor in the entrepreneurs, in the innovators and the young scientists, I would like to firstly start by saying that you guys are awesome, you are amazing, and whatever you take from this experience, always remember that you are one of the greatest assets the country has. And for that, give yourselves a round of applause. So my name is Tsepo Mangwele. Um, as Mr. Leach said, I am a ke chemical engineering graduate. So I studied at VETS. Um, normally the degree takes uh, four years. Uh, unfortunately, it took me six years for reasons I shall mention later. But I studied chemical engineering, um, and I've always been eager and very much passionate about seeking solutions for problems that are existing in society. And just before I get into that, I believe that one of the key things that um, really shaped my future was how this gentleman thinks. And I know most of you are inspired by him, but Albert Einstein once said that anyone who's never made a mistake has never tried anything new. And I think we can all resonate with the idea here that We've all tried things, they didn't work the first time, you tried again, still didn't work, but you persevered through and made sure that whatever it is that you are trying to achieve at least goes to the next stage. So I'm inspired a lot by Albert Einstein, but I am from what one might call humble beginnings. I think the reason why I'm sharing a little bit about where I'm from is that we don't have to be defined by our circumstances. Our country has a lot of that symptom around, because where we're from, there's a lot of symptoms around blaming things from the past, but I believe that we can overcome that. So I'm from Rustenburg, small town, mining town in the northwest, and I studied um, at a school called Bigahong. It's a simple uh, public school. Unfortunately, we never had the chance to be part of Olympiads or science expos like these. So when I'm in here, I'm encouraged and I'm hoping that the organizers can get down there and reach some of these schools. So that's where I come from. And where I come from has also shaped the way I think. So I'm always thinking about how do we then find solutions to problems that exist. And that's why I sort of started this journey um, of entrepreneurship. But it started in a very odd way for me because I was starting third year um, in my chemical engineering. But at the time, we, through being exposed to plant material, there was something that the municipality was doing where they would take plant material and throw them away at landfills. But now they themselves are complaining that the landfills are getting filled. So I thought that there should be a way that we could do something with these plant material that is being thrown away. And remember, at the time I was doing third year, I had a little bit of an issue because if I started using research labs at VETS to try and find the solution, the IP would then belong to VETS, some of it. Well, most of it. <laughs> so then I then had to think around ways in terms of like, how do I then sort of find a solution with what I have? And I was fortunate enough that I was sort of staying in a residence, sort of like a rest, where it was sort of self-catering. So I had a little kitchen, so for me that worked perfectly. So in 2017, I started taking the pots I have. I'd never cooked a lot anyway. So I took the pots I have and I started cooking the plant material as a way of sort of starting the research and development. Because I believe that the plant material had so much value in it. And I had started being exposed to something called lignin. So I truly believe that plant material carries so much power and value because if you think about it also, fossil fuels comes from plant and organic matter. So I thought that there could be something we can do with this plant material. So I took my pot, I started doing this R&D in the kitchen. Also, please don't do this while you're at home. Um, I don't want your parents coming for me. Um, so I started doing research and development in the kitchen. So at the time, in 2017 to 2019, I started doing a lot of work on the cellulose and lignin extraction. Um, also, I didn't have funds. I'm a university student, so I also had to find ways to now raise funding. And one of the key things that helps in fundraising in South Africa is something called pitching competitions. So what I then did was sort of apply to pitching competitions. In the beginning, I was terrible because I was so technical trying to tell people about how amazing lignin is and how it can change the world. 
So I lost a lot of pitching competitions, but as I then honed the scale of speaking and then winning some competitions, I would then take that money and put it back into the kitchen research. Um, in the end of 2019, I got lucky and I got exposed to the Department of Science and Innovation. Um, and through that, I sort of shared the value of how I believe that lignin will be the commodity of the future. This will change different industries. And I was then fortunate enough to be able to receive funding. I then went straight to vets. I was like, I think I have some sense now, um, and I'm ready to use your labs. So what I then did is that to protect the IP, I went back to the vets uh, university and I said, I will do something called the full cost basis model, where essentially you are paying to be able to use their resources. And then that allows you to then keep the IP. So from 2019 to 2021, we were fortunate enough to have the facilities at VETS and we did the R&D and we were able to then find a novel way of extracting lignin. And through that period, I then filed a PCT patent essentially for being the first to extract lignin out with tartaric acid. So in that journey, we then had proof of concepts. I saw uh, one lady have a proof of concept of a water purification system, which is quite amazing. Uh, it's called Moonro. Um, do check it out. It's quite amazing. But the idea is you need to have some proof of concept then to start really showing that the idea works. A lot of you guys have done great work in terms of the research methodology. The next step from there is now how do you then prove and show something to people that could then be like, oh, okay, we see the research was done, we understand what this is about, how do we then make it practical? So that was a, a lot of work done in 2021, um, until the end of 2021, rather. In 2022, um, while we were getting out of COVID, we had already received funding follow-on to be able to do upscaling. So the idea here that you might see is that all of these things happen in stages, you see. You need to start with the research methodology and your hypothesis, but from there you need to do your proof of concept. But in this journey, what you also need to do is ensure that you are keeping that IP to yourself because it's one of the greatest assets if you retain it. It could become one of the, the biggest things that you have. So from that, what we then did is 2022, we started building something called the pilot scale production. So essentially, we moved from the lab. We had seen that, okay, we can do this in the lab. It works. Uh, develop some new processes. What we then did is, how can we produce one kg a month of this thing? So that process is called pilot phase. So we then did that with the help of the DSI. But also, I continued doing a lot more work in terms of pitching competitions because funding is one of the biggest drivers of uh, 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 sustainability in terms of a small business. So we continue doing more research, but also ensuring that we produce uh, at 1 kg samples. But what I'm most excited about is that this, from last year, we started building the world's first demonstration plant. Essentially with this, we are being the first company to be able to do something called total biomass valorization which just means that in the plant material, we are able to use the cellulose, lignin, and hemicellulosis. And above that, we've been able to then produce more things. I'll just show you pictures of that. And we are really excited about this, and we'll be working on this um, from last year, and we'll be hoping that we'll be done with the demonstration next year. But our dream, our vision, is to be able to build a full-scale demonstration plant. Currently, we're working with one of the biggest paper companies um, in South Africa, and we're taking in their waste now into our process to see how we can help them extract out lignin and other material in that. So essentially, we want to then list the company in the JSE, beautiful things. Um, but what essentially we do is, like I said, biomass valorization. We produce lignin, sugars, soap. We also have a skincare brand that I'll tell you a little bit about. But the idea here is that we've been able to start with a little idea of how do we take this plant material, convert it into something that's very much valuable, and then take that to market. Because that's then the last thing that happened, right? So 2022, uh, we then started doing something called commercialization, which just now means that how do we then take the material and put them into the market? So we started selling something called net UVK. Essentially, it's the lignin that we extracted, and now we are using that as a UV blocker in sunscreens. Um, currently talking now to one of the biggest uh, multinationals in the skincare and cosmetics, and they are looking into putting that in their range. But we also have a skincare brand that's in-house. So we are one of the few people to produce soap from plant material. 
So we then took that soap and created a brand called Orfeel that produces 100% natural and um, eco-friendly skincare and cosmetic products. But the idea here is that this journey is not easy. Um, it might seem like that when you look back and connect the dots, but it's been one of the hardest journeys ever. I remember in 2019, uh, we... I had developed the bioplastic using lignin, and I went to one of the research councils, and I sort of kind of lost my IP in the journey because I wasn't aware of how the things work in these things because they had tweaked a little thing in the production stuff, and now because they did tweaks, they now own the IP, and I had to then license my own formulation from them. So be careful around intellectual property. But also when you have chats to people, especially at things like this and expos, be careful of what you expose. So intellectual property has, has different things in them. Most of the time, people know of patents, but there's also trademarks. The most important one is a trade know-how. And these are oftentimes the things that you don't share with people because they are sort of like the essence of the company. So I would urge you guys in this stage, all of the things that make your innovation what it is and the core, keep that to yourself. And once you've gotten to a stage where you can then afford to patent or even have a trademark, something that protects the idea. Once you get to that point, keep that key and the, the source of, of what your innovation is about. So I learned a few things around IP, and I got burnt a little bit. But at the moment now, we have PCT filed, we have trademarks and copyrights, but we're also now working on filing more, more patents. The most important thing also, secondly, that I learned is collaboration. You might see me standing here talking about these wonderful things you do, we do, but at, in the background, I have an amazing team that works, uh, that works with me. And I think that that's another thing that you also need to seek amongst yourself, to see who can we, I work with around here that does a similar thing. How can we collaborate? How can we share ideas? Because that idea then, you are able to expantiate a little bit more on that, but also you have lifelong friends that you can form or possibly build a company together once you guys have left university. So I believe in collaboration, and I believe that it's one of the key essence of being sure that you are able to grow a company or grow whatever idea that you have. Um, the third thing that I learned, and I learned this lesson, um, is one has to, I learned this lesson last year, is that one has to have extreme courage. Um, I've always been undergoing a lot of challenges with research not working, things not working out, but last year, I had one of the biggest challenges ever. I had a, what one might call an industrial accident. Essentially, what happened is that I was involved in an industrial accident and I spent about four months in hospital. Um, but in the journey of recovery, I was not able to speak for about two weeks or so. I couldn't walk. Um, and I was questioning now because the thing that I loved the most was the thing that got me there. I was questioning now, how do I then get out of this? And I think oftentimes people in such instances, this is where they falter, is how do you get out of one thing that could truly change how you see life? Because after going through that four-month period of being in hospital, firstly, the company was still burning a lot of money. Uh, employees also have to be paid. But also, I also then have to sort of fight for my own survival. So I learned a lot about being able to then get through all of these hardships. And what most people don't really understand is that we innovators are passionate about what we do. But if you look at the word passion, it's from a Latin origin and it actually means to suffer. Um, and what we need to learn is how, when we do get to a point where there's suffering, do we overcome that? So I had to learn how to be extremely courageous through that journey, and I hope you guys take that from this because this journey is not easy. And quick fire lessons before I leave you guys. I think one key thing you need to understand is that don't leave university or school. Oftentimes we see people in Silicon Valley saying that I left school to go study a, start a company, but what we don't understand is that the privilege that they have is not something that we possess. We are of a different context, so if you can, please do finish your education uh, because it's one of the key things that you can then utilize in your um, entrepreneurial journey if you go that way or if you become a scientist, obviously you'll need that. So please do stay in school. The second thing would be IP. Ensure that 
you protect your ideas. I know it's sometimes hard because you want to share with people the amazing work that you do, ensure that you retain your IP. Lastly, something that happens a lot when you grow old, you'll see this, is that curiosity that you have now, it starts dwindling. It's, it's so sad to see, is that the older we get, you see in this section here, <laughs> there's not a lot of curiosity left. Um, but what I will say to you guys is that as you, as you grow and you grow older, ensure that you retain your curiosity. Because of all the things that you can lose, is the zeal to want to try new things, the zeal to want to be able to explore and do more. And as long as you can retain that, the world then becomes your oyster as an entrepreneur, as a scientist, as an engineer. So just remember that failure is part of the journey. Stumbling blocks are inevitable. What matters is how you conquer those. And I'm sure you guys might have heard of Thomas Edison. These are my parting words. Um, if you have not failed, he said that I have not failed. I've just found a thousand ways that don't work. So before I leave, I just want to say to you guys, I've seen guys doing a lot of work on antioxidants, um, comparison, guys doing water filtration systems. There's a lady doing social sciences where she's looking at PMS. The ideas are here. We have one of the greatest minds. 2%, they said, isn't it? So remember that when you leave here, you guys are part of the 2%. And that means that you guys are the cream of the crop, but you guys are your greatest assets. Thank you very much. That's my journey. Take care. Thank you, Tepo.